Okay, welcome in everybody. Rob here. Rock hard music news time again. So we're just going to scour the depths of rock and metal. Speaking of, we've got uh, Bruce Dickinson weighs in on skyrocketing ticket prices. Okay, uh, says concert tickets have gone through the roof. I've got no interest in paying $1,200 to see you too. I don't have any interest in paying $12 to see you too. But besides that, uh, in an interview with Mexico's Atmospheres magazine, Iron Maiden singer Bruce Dickinson discussed the changes in the music industry over the last four decades. Uh, the music industry has done two things. He says, on one hand, if you're an artist, it's contracted and it is and it's shrunk in terms of the amount of money you'll get paid for your art, unless you are some massive social media thing or whatever it is. Or unless you're a DJ who turns up with a memory stick and gets paid five times what the band gets paid. Isn't that the truth? Uh, and then they have to split it eight ways and turns up the memory stick and and he just turns up with the memory stick and pretends he's doing something. I hate fucking DJs, don't you? Uh, and go, they always think they're the fucking star of the show, right? You're just a fucking douche playing music. All right. Anyway, uh, and goes away with a huge amount of money. So the world is gone on its ass from that perspective. And there's not a lot that any individual can do about it. You just have to work with the way the world is. He continued. I have no desire whatsoever to be a DJ. I'm a singer. I'm a musician. I have bands and people that I like. And they all have to make a living playing with me. So I do the best I can to make sure everybody's happy, everybody's making a living, and we can go out and play great music. In terms of the way records are sold, records, downloads, things like that, I think it's a lose-lose situation for everybody, Dickinson added. I mean, you have all the things like Spotify and stuff like that who are basically ripping off musicians by paying them next to nothing for playing their work, and still Spotify can't make money. So they're not making any money. Musicians aren't getting paid. New bands can hardly afford to start up. But what do they? But but they do. Why? Because they love what they do. It's what drives them. What motivates them. So the streaming service could manage to actually pay people properly for the people for when people listen, which probably means people listening have to pay more, which I frankly don't object to, and I don't think profitability. Or I, I don't think probably most listeners would. Maybe less people would listen, but it would be people who care, not people who do it just because it's cheap. And I want to fucking touch on this. I actually thought about this the other day when I was driving around listening to uh, Amazon music <laughs> and the state of the fucking record industry and bands and contracts and all the home studio recordings and all that stuff. And, and here's the thing. Actually, it, it it really sparked when I did my last news video and uh, Metallica was in there. It just reminded me what a douchebag Lars was with Napster. And uh, I thought about this long and hard. Back then, everybody wanted to blame Napster and the people stealing music. Now, I can't speak for everybody, but the vast majority of everybody I knew back there use Napster for one reason. To start, it was to get older stuff that was never released on CD, cassette, or at least was extremely hard to find anymore, well out of circulation, well out of pressing and print, to get that so you could make... You remember, when Napster came out, uh, burnable CDs became a thing, right? I mean, back in the day... You could uh, you could choose to fucking use your old boombox, ghetto blaster, and uh, record onto a blank cassette something from the radio, which always had some asshole full of himself, speaking of thinking he's star of the show, DJ talking through the first 30 seconds of the fucking song. Or you could eventually, with the double-decker, you know, go cassette to cassette, which that always sounded like shit. And then when DVDs came out, you could now do DVD to cassette. However, computers became a big thing. And with computers becoming a big thing, DVD burners became a big thing. 
on your computer. You kids out there who may watch this, you don't know nothing about this because you're stupid. You think the way to listen to music is with some little eye douche or your fucking little loser watch or your phone and some earbuds and, and walk around like you're king shit. Meanwhile, you can't hear someone coming up to hit you right in the back of the fucking head because you got your goddamn buds. And you know what pisses me off more than anything is these fucking assholes that should be illegal driving around with their fucking headphones on. Hey, asshole. There are stereos. There are Bluetooth stereos. There are stereos with fucking uh, thumb drive, fucking U or yeah, USB fucking things you can plug in. You when you put that fucking headset on, you now are losing the ability to fucking hear anything outside of you. It's you know, well, you crank your music up. You, yes, you can still hear it. You can still hear to a, to an extent some road noise or some major commotion. Those fucking earbuds make you essentially goddamn deaf to your surroundings. Then couple it with these stupid morons on an 85 degree day wearing their fucking hoodie up in their car so they got no peripheral vision. Bottom line is I hate everybody Gen Z. <laughs> anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, so DVD burning became a thing, right? You make your own DVD. Why? Because maybe you wanted to hear three songs from Slaughter, two songs from Firehouse, a couple songs from Kiss, and one from Ozzy, and you didn't want to switch fucking DVDs or CDs every five fucking seconds, right? So what happened here is Napster went from a way to find something obscure that you wanted to hear to a way to avoid having to buy an entire CD for one song. Because let's face it, come early 90s when CDs were a big thing and the internet was a big thing and, and uh, Napster and such, uh, artists were mailing the shit in. You know, gone were the days where they had great full albums. Most bands were putting out a couple of fucking radio release quality singles and the rest was fucking filler. I, for one, got tired of fucking buying, paying the price for a brand new fucking CD when I could have just as well got the CD single or cassette single. So a lot of people, it's, 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 a, it's a double-edged sword. A lot of people were doing it to avoid getting ripped off by bands who were mailing it in, just wanted a couple songs. You know, it is what it is. You look at something like, uh, well, not back then, but now a band like uh, Linkin Park, right? I like something, nothing else, something else uh, in the end, Nothing else matters. In the end, I think it's a song. It's the only goddamn song I liked. I'm not buying an entire fucking DVD or CD for one fucking song. There was no streaming back then. So you had a choice. Waste the 10, 15 bucks, whatever the fucking CDs were back then, for one goddamn song, record it off a fucking radio station, or download the fucking song. It was convenient, and it is, in my opinion, to the band's own fault for mailing it in with a bunch of garbage and expecting people to pay full price for it. The other end of the fucking sword was people were, um, how can I say this? I invested a lot of money in my childhood with vinyl. And then I invested a lot of money on cassettes, rebuying the same goddamn thing I had on vinyl. For years, that was good enough. Then they come out, fucking technology, with CDs. And you have to stick with the old technology, which sounds like shit in comparison, buy car after car as they come out, which no longer have cassette decks. So now you got to go out and buy a goddamn stupid little fucking portable CD player that has a cassette attached to it and a wire and shove it into your cassette deck if you wanted a DVD player and couldn't afford them because they were so goddamn expensive back then. And if you didn't have a fuck cassette player because your fucking car only came with a DVD player, now you were screwed and you had to rebuy every goddamn thing for a third fucking time. It was a goddamn scam, and I am here to tell you that the only people to blame for the, the condition the record industry is in 
are A, the artists, and B, the record companies for multiplying the different media mediums to play the fucking music. They got greedy. Let's have it in vinyl. Let's have it in cassette. Let's have it in CD. And then the car manufacturers, to no fault of their own, move ahead with technology. Oh, everybody's into CDs now. Let's just put CD players in. Right, so now there's fucking cars and computers. You can't even get a CD player. So now you're forced to fucking do the download streaming service. So long story longer, this is not Napster's fault. This is not a handful of people by percentage if you compare it to the amount of people who are going to buy the music anyway because they love the music, they're lazy, they didn't have the technology, they didn't know how to use it, or they couldn't give a fuck less. Whatever's out there, that's what they buy. That's the majority of the people. All those I just listed, that's the majority of people. Some of us who had the knowledge, the ability, the wherewithal, and the irritability with the crap that was getting put out, we're going to take a shortcut. I took plenty of shortcuts that way. Not ashamed of it. Proud of it. Because you're going to fucking rip me up as a record company and as a fucking band by putting out garbage. You get what you fucking get. But the bottom line here is <coughs> Napster and us handful of fans, by, by percentage of people who actually buy music, did not change the course of the record industry and the artist pay. They did it themselves. The bands did it by being lazy and mailing it in and putting garbage music out. The record labels did it by fucking taking full advantage of making people buy their fucking collections in goddamn triplicate and then stop slowly putting that other shit out so now you're forced to stick with the new stuff. So when somebody comes out with an avenue to where a couple shortcuts can be taken, they get all fucking butthurt. And instead of just powering through and sticking with the fucking business model that had worked since the beginning of recorded music, and just keep shoving out DVDs, DVDs. They jumped on the bandwagon of streaming. They cut their own fucking throats. The record companies lost tons of money. There's no fucking markup on a streaming song, especially if you're going to enable people to stream it as a song versus buying the whole album. So now, if a band puts out 10 songs on an album for... 12 bucks, whatever they charge. I don't buy stream music. Or I can buy the only good song on it because I heard my friends, you know, fucking downloads for $1.99. Guess which way I'm going? I'm just getting the two bucks. Where in the budget is there to pay the band as a record company when that's what you're charging? There is none. There's no profit margin at all. So oversaturation of media, mediums, albums, cassettes, CDs, laziness of bands, and record companies being so butt all stupid to jump on the easiest platform of all to copy and steal music, which is putting it on the internet. How many people do you really think were actually taking good money from bands and record companies by downloading some songs on Napster and making a burn CD. You really think it was making a dent? No, it wasn't. They panicked, they guessed, and they guessed wrong. And they now, in turn, jumped to the fucking future and made everything accessible for every hacker torrent site and you name it to fucking the ultimate of easy to steal the fucking music. Now they don't even have to go through the fucking hassle and the time of burning or ripping and then putting it online. You're putting it online for them. People's passwords are stolen, borrowed. I mean, you got to be kidding me that these artists and these record companies still want to blame everybody else. So I understand what Bruce is saying. It's got to be next to impossible to make money other than selling merch and getting whatever percentage you're given of the gate. Or if you're paid, you know, a set amount to play a night at a, at a venue, it sucks. And we're all seeing it and we're all suffering from it. I mean, it's just the way it is. But it ain't my fault. It ain't Napster's fault. It's their own damn fault. So that ought to learn you.
Technology is not all it's cracked up to be, especially if you're trying to turn a profit on a physical item. When you make that physical item now a file on a fucking internet, you are asking for trouble. They got trouble, and now they're crying about it. So, all right, let's see what else we got. Uh, Striper's upcoming album will be heavy and very melodic with sing-along choruses. I hope so, because I love Striper, and I've had some fans on on here and on my other channel tell, oh, you got to check out Striper's last three or four albums. They're just epic. No, they're not. They're, they're not epic in the same way that Judas Priest's um, painkiller and everything forward is not epic. They transform themselves into a solid rock band with a heavy metal edge. And I've heard some of these striper things. It's it's if it wouldn't be for fucking Michael Sweet's regular voice, it's speed metal. It's garbage. So I hope they do get back to basics because to me, their last few albums are virtually unlistenable unless you're into that rapid fire double bass million mile an hour guitar crap, which I'm not. All right. Uh, who? That's an ugly son of a bitch, right? He stuck his finger in an electric socket and got stabbed in each cheek. Okay. Mick Mars refused to believe he would be confined to a wheelchair. Man, if that ain't the poster child for fucking, you know, condoms, I don't know what is. Whew. All right. Zach Wilde up performing with Pantera. It's great seeing people take a trip down memory lane every day. Okay, here's the thing. I don't like Pantera. It's too heavy for me. Like, Walk was a good song, right? I think that was Pantera. Or Pantera. Uh, I'd like to hear if there's any Pantera fans out there because we go through this bullshit with Kiss in a, in a lot of other uh, hair metal bands and even classic rock bands, right? When they replace a legendary person, whether they're, you know, disabled, dead, or just don't want to do it anymore. How do you feel if there's any Pantera fans? Does this bother you? Is this acceptable for you? Or do you do like KISS fans do and say, this ain't Pantera. I ain't going. I ain't doing it. Just curious what side of the fence you guys are on. Oh, speaking of Napster, old dipshit Lars and Chad Smith, looks like uh, Will Ferrell, right? Uh, to make cameos and sequel to Icon Mockumentary Spinal Tap. Okay, there you go. There's another thing I've always hated is that fucking Spinal Tap thing. And nothing pisses me off worse than when metalheads endorse and enjoy something that's mocking their very existence. Pathetic. Uh, Danny Carey describes Tool's painstaking songwriting process. I tell you, when it comes to Tool, the only thing painstaking is listening to the recorded songs. And what the fuck is this? Is this 1985? You got some Converse on with a skateboard behind you? Idiot. Uh, Bruce Dickinson doesn't give a shit about classification of heavy metal subgenres. Sub well, who gives a shit? Uh, why do people hate Nickelback? Well, probably because they suck. Uh, corpse paint, black metal-inspired makeup, now available from Elf Cosmetics and Liquid Death. <sighs> okay. Except no one cares. Slipknot, no one cares. Judas Priest performs in Munich during 2024 Metal Masters European Tour. We got to the point where I don't care about them anymore either. Corn comes out the same as it goes in. Uh, former Cities guitarist Steve Myron Vokic, dead at 60. Okay, never heard of him. Ex Guns N' Roses drummer Matt Sorum talks about his love for dogs. I think old Matt's in heat. What do you think? Woof. Armored Saint sucks. Juan Crucier, the other voice of Rat, to perform band's classic songs on Spring Summer 2024 tour. Are you out of your fucking mind? A bass player who's never been the vocalist is now going to have his own version of rat. <sighs> the self-proclaimed other voice of rat has announced a series of shows where he'll perform 
some of the band's classic songs. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. You know, I've said it once. I've said it a thousand times. Short of being the lead singer, if you want to continue, create a cover band, call it as such, call it You're In Love or Lay It Down or whatever, a rat tribute band with former rat member, or form a new fucking band. Lead singer's the only one that's got the clout and the ability to make that work. <sighs> yeah, we just talked about that. Couldn't care less. Yeah, couldn't care less. Oh. JoLynn Turner, the corpse of Ying Mei Malmsteen, is his own worst enemy. I've heard that. It's a lot like Vinnie Vincent. Sebastian Bach doesn't mind older musicians like Paul Stanley using some technology to help them get through a concert. So, <sighs> former Skid Row singer has once again defended Kiss against claims that the band was using pre-recorded tracks during its recently compete, completed farewell tour. Ever since Kiss's End of the Road, Shrek launched in 2019, there have been persistent online chatter about Frontman Paul Stanley allegedly singing to backing tapes. The speculation stemmed from the fact that Stanley had been struggling to hit high notes in many of the band's classics for a number of years. Bach, a self-proclaimed Kiss Uber fan, weighed in on the rumors of playback tracks being used by Kiss concerts during an appearance on the Rock Tales with Amit Zappa podcast. Uh, we live in a world now where technology is taking over and so many bands rely on backing tracks. It's well known. That's the way it is now. My position on that, I always hear people, Paul Stanley of Kiss is using backtracks. And my thing is, Paul Stanley has given us all fucking 50 years of entertainment, and he's trying to do, all he's trying to do is keep doing it one more time. The dude is in his 70s. He put on foot-high platform boots makeup and his make his body fucking skinny and rock. He has strap himself to wires fly across the arena. My mom's 82. I love my mom. I can't see her strapping on boots and spitting up blood or breathing fire. To continue, my point is Paul Stanley or somebody in their 70s is somebody older trying to put on an entertaining show, and they need some technology to help them get through that, and they're that old. I don't mind. What I do mind is having a band that's 23 open for me and doesn't even try to fucking do the singing or the backgrounds. They're just going to run that shit. That's ridiculous to me, but... If you've got like Phil Collins is a fucking in a fucking wheelchair, give him a break. My point is some respect for all these guys have done. That's the way I look at it. And absolutely hallelujah, Sebastian. It is not like Kiss is on the asylum tour and using backtracks in spots. Because I'm going to get someone replying on here. It's it's like fucking clockwork. There's always some moron who claims that Kiss lip syncs. And then I correct them and saying, look, retard, you don't know what lip syncing is, Milli Vanilli. Lip syncing is clearly having a dead mic, miming that you're singing an entire performance. What Paul has going is a fucking toned down, turned down backtrack that he sings along to his voice being predominant. And when he can't do it, or he's winded, or his voice is cracking, if he backs off and mimes a word that's playing on the backtrack, that's not fucking lip syncing. I would love to bitch slap every one of these fucking trolls Oh, it's just amazing to me how stupid people are. And I saw this here in scrolling. While responding to a question from the biggest douchebag on the planet. This guy thinks he's so fucking funny. Sinking Stanley with a fucking picture of Paul Stanley with a fucking Photoshop mullet putting out all this fucking controversy. He's such a fucking genius 
then he's so sure of himself that he doesn't put his own fucking face on a fucking video or a thumbnail. He's a coward. He's a piece of shit. And if anybody knows him, feel free to tell him I said so and feel free to tell him anytime, anywhere he's close to my location, we can get it on like Donkey Kong. This motherfucker needs to be shut up with a good old ass whipping. And that's all I'm going to say about it. All right. Uh, System of a down. Don't care. Cannibal corpse. Looks like Frank Zappa. Next. Uh, Judge Judy. John Schaefer sentencing until July. Uh, who the hell's John Schaefer? Uh, iced earth. What's he going to jail for? Diddling? Uh, he's going undergoing. <laughs> he was scheduled to undergo an undisclosed medical procedure. Transitioning much? Uh, let's see. Delay the sentencing. Are we going to know what he's going in for or what? Are you kidding me? Aimed at curbing financial crimes to prosecute to John Fisher. Court sided with Fisher uh, last month. I, I, I'm i not getting into all that because that's where YouTube censors you. Uh, Wolfgang Amadeus Hoffman didn't know if he wanted except to be called a heavy metal band at first. That's because he's the former singer of... Uh, Midnight oil, right? And his beds are still burning. Uh, <laughs> there's no fucking way this guy was in a band, right? This is a, a stereotypical redneck living in a fucking trailer. We're going out to the old Quickie Mart to buy some tobacco and a six-pack of beer. Breaking at Benjamin's Keith Wallen <laughs> explains why it's taking so long to release new music. Maybe because nobody takes this mug seriously. Are you kidding? Wow. <laughs> Trucker hat, poindexter glasses, and one of the world's dorkiest fucking facial hair. Uh, okay. Wow. Hey, since when did uh, good old Rosie O'Donnell start playing drums? <laughs> God damn it, these people have no business being in rock or metal. I tell you what. Uh, Jeff Scott Soto, Sons of Anarchy, or Art of Anarchy. Same difference. Uh huh. Don't care. Iron Maiden, couldn't care less. Uh, the Pretty Reckless to support ACDC on Spring Summer 2024 European Tour. Uh, disturbed, couldn't care less. Uh, Hollywood Vampires, couldn't care less. Cannibal Corpse sucks. Slipknot sucks. Thought there was something else in here a couple days ago that I wanted to get to. Jeff Pilsen is angry and pissed off about Dawkins' 2023 box set, The Electra Albums, 83 to 97. 87. Uh, well, let me guess he didn't get paid. Uh... Marked his first appearance. <sighs> I don't know. That's a whole lot to read. They should put that shit right up front. I'm guessing he's not getting spare share of royalties or something. Uh, Rick Emmett, why Triumph will never get inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Not enough hits. I mean, it's just that easy. Not a bad band, just they weren't very fucking, you know, they weren't a household name, not in this country. Uh, who cares? Joe Satriani and Steve I cover Metallica's Enter Sandman at the Satchvi U.S. Tour kickoff. Old Chrome Dome himself. Let's see how this sounds. Nice ad. 
little phaser on there. Enough for me. It's still Metallica. It still sucks. But Hughes don't care. Oh, I saw a sample of this and I'll play it for you guys. I've always said nine out of 10 times, 99 times out of 100, 1,990 times out of two, 99 times out of 2,000, the lead singer is the band, right? And that is no exception for Trickster. Peter Lorne was an awesome vocalist. Uh, so Trickster going on with Autumn can suck it. Apparently, he rejoins Steve Brown and PJ Farley on stage. And what I saw is a pure and simple argument for after a certain amount of years and a certain age, you should welcome backtrack support help. Because if you don't, this is what you get. I hope you guys get the point here. Jesus Christ, what a long article. Whoops. children tell me again why backtracks are a bad thing is this what you want is this what you want and i don't care if you don't like trickster it's not the point any band insert any band in their 50s 60s 70s whatever voice burnt this is what you'd rather have honest live rock and roll or Live rock and roll with some assistance to make it at least uncringeworthy. And I don't want to hear from you people who say, well, if they can't do it, they shouldn't play at all. Well, then what are you going to do? If you're 50, 60 years old, you're a big hair metal fan, you can't stand any of this modern day shit, you should just never get to go to a live show again? Go fuck yourself. Some of us want to see the greatest band in the world, the greatest stage show in the world, Kiss. Some people want to see these big bands who put on big productions or have energy who actually know what it means to be a rock star on stage. And if they can no longer do it, then they can have help. In my book, any day of the week, then put out shit like this. This is embarrassing. This is humiliating. It's cringeworthy. Whatever. Okay, Charlie Brown on reaction from Pantera fans to stop to seeing band play. Who cares? Jesus Christ, it's like all Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, and, and fucking uh, Pantera today. <sighs> we already did that. Archangel. There was something I wanted. There it is. I never read into it. I just saw the art or the headline. Ace Freely was shocked to hear collaborator Steve Brown take credit for writing 97% of 10,000 Volts album. 
to surprise anybody, really. All right, let's get to her. In an interview with Canada's The Metal Voice. Boy, that Ace will take an interview anywhere, right? Any of you Ace fans out there with a fucking Facebook account, just, just reach out to him. He'll let you interview him. Shot down rumors that almost all of the songwriting on his latest album, 10,000 Volts, was done by his collaborator, trickster guitarist Steve Brown. Remember when they were parading around the making of the album that these two were the biggest best friends in the world? Now Ace himself was saying, my bestie, right? Well, that lasted. Ah, the original Kiss guitarist said, I got aggravated the other day because I heard that people were saying I didn't write any of the songs on the record. And they were saying it was all Steve Brown. And Steve, he was doing the Three Sides of the Coin Kiss-centric podcast. <laughs> I bet Michael Brandbold had a fucking field day with this. And he kind of confirmed that by saying, yeah, the interviewer said, well, how much did Ace bring to the table? And he goes, well, I pretty much brought about 97%. And I was really shocked when he said that because that's not the case. And I called him up, and he apologized to me. Ace continued, Steve is a wonderful guy. I love him. Did, are you hearing any familiar, is there any deja vu going on here at all, Ace fans? He was so excited about the record, and they were asking him questions that weren't rehearsed. As an interview should be, he had no idea. Everybody sometimes toots their own horn a little more than they should have sometimes without thinking. So by accidentally not thinking and tooting his own horns, he came up with 97%. Not, oh, I contributed a lot and Ace contributed a lot. 97% not thinking. <sighs> he was so excited about the record. He made the statement, but he admitted to me last night that that wasn't the case, and I brought up In the Sky and several other things. <sighs> What's that one song that everybody's jumping on the bandwagon now, fighting for life, saying it's one of the best songs on the record? I rewrote the whole chorus for that. I'm a very good lyricist, freely explained. I just can't speak. I've always, I always have been. But when it came to this album, if Steve brought a song to me with lyrics, ultimately I ended up rewriting at least 50% of the lyrics. Here we go, more percentages. Just because I'm a... <sighs> He's a real humble guy, isn't he? Just because I'm a better lyricist. And I, th <laughs> I think he'd be the first one to admit that. But he's definitely a much better engineer and producer than I am. Uh, trained monkeys are a better engineer and producer than you are. Uh, and a great guitar player and a good songwriter and very knowledgeable on Pro Tools, much more so than myself. I like to give credit where credit's due. All right. I'm about... <laughs> okay, people. You know that old saying that if something happens over and over and over again, maybe it's not them, maybe it's you. Does any of this stuff sound vaguely familiar? This guy said things that shocked me. They weren't true. I'm better. He apologized with no proof or document of it. I don't know why these people are always saying these things about me. I... I is anybody surprised? And I don't know which fucking side is true or not. I couldn't give a shit less. The album sucks. And in my opinion, neither one of these fuckers should be lining up to take credit for it. But the bottom line here is <clears throat> Ace has got a history of this shit, right? Going in with a big fucking mouth, not showing up, not doing his fair share of work. Someone has to fucking do it for him. Then it comes out that he didn't play on this track or this album, and then he's fucking butthurt and says everybody's fucking lying. This is the life story of this fucking guy. From day one, he may have had talent. He may have had drive early on. But since Destroyer, and probably a little before, because it started with Destroyer, this guy was more fucking concerned about partying, having a good time, making money, living the rock star life, while someone else did all the fucking work, and he got credit for it. 
I don't know if Steve Brown's lying or not. I don't know if Ace is just delusional and doesn't remember right. I have no fucking idea. We'll never really fucking know. But I find it really, really sketchy that he throws out, well, a lot of people get excited and, and just they're not thinking, so they try to toot their horn a little bit too much. How does that equate to how much did Ace bring to the table? On Ace Freely's album, I did 90% of it or 97% of it. How was that tooting your horn accidentally? Accidentally be like if you co-wrote three songs and said, oh, yeah, it was like a 50-50 effort. You know, that's tooting your own horn, a slight exaggeration. To come out and say what he said, you bet your ass he meant it. It's probably fucking true. Ace, pro from what I've seen from his shopping videos and his fucking in-studio fucking making of videos, the guy is about as competent as Joe Biden getting off and on a stage. It does not surprise me at all that he sat there and just giggled and laughed and threw out a couple of suggestions here or there while everybody else did the work, right? Does that fucking surprise anybody? I mean, Todd Howard, Howard carried fucking Freely's come. Let's just be real. So anyway, I found that interesting. And, and again, maybe it's not everybody else, Ace. Maybe it's just you. So, I hope you all enjoyed the news and my several rants, as I like to do. And until next time, thanks for watching.